name is Kim and I agreed to learn how to DJ in just 30 days. As a Filipino, I've been around music pretty much my whole life. There'd be music at parties, music at church, music at home. Both my dad and my brother are professional musicians. I just never found my instrument. This 30-day project would entail me attending 30 lessons that were both one-on-one -on -one and group lessons. And then at the end of the 30 days, I was to perform a set at a club. So on day one, I was feeling pretty nervous, but at the same time confident. You know, I was thinking to myself that I have rhythm. I can follow a beat. This can't be too hard. So my teacher, Relly, spent about two hours with me on that first day. And I just familiarized myself with all the equipment. I learned how to play a track and mix another track with it. It was a pretty good day. So I want you to put these headphones on. So when you're DJing, you always want to have one headphone on, one off. Oh, so you can hear. Yeah. It's not just to look cool. I've seen DJs have both on. Um, the song ends or something happens and the, the song that's playing just ends. And they miss and it. And they're still going like... Oh no! <laughs> your, your main focus is just moving the record up and down. My name is... May and I've been DJing for a little bit over five years. Hey, I'm Flip Out and I've been DJing since I was 13. I'm DJ Relic. I've been DJing for 18 years now. DJ Wondercut. I've been around turntables and scratching since 1998. A lot of people think that we're button pressers. The biggest misconception that people have about DJing is that anyone can do it. It's so easy. You can just pick it up and like, oh my gosh, I can totally DJ. Usually in like a kind of a condescending way towards the art and culture of DJing. Like, oh, I can do this. Oh, they're just playing songs. It's not that easy, man. Sweet, if I gotta go with those, I'm a 